past 10 years, skateboarding has grown up. All across North America and Europe, kids who were once considered thugs and punks are now starting to get the recognition that they deserve as urban artists. But this isn't the case everywhere. Nestled against the northern coast of the world's largest freshwater lake lies Thunder Bay, Ontario. Skaters here in Thunder Bay face a unique set of obstacles. A combination of poor weather conditions and open hostility from a community reluctant to support their choice of expression has made it difficult to be a skater in Thunder Bay. Somebody dubbed it an extreme sport, and everybody wanted to do it. So skateboarding had really became popular, or a lot more popular. Well, the reason I skate is uh, I get a, a good workout from it. Alternative to going to the gym, how enjoyable it is to spend this kind of time with your kids. Your kids actually uh, are impressed that you're uh, giving effort to, to do the same thing they like to do. I've been able to actually relate to my kids. On a better level. I knew everybody, I swear to God, that if everyone was skateboarding in the city, you know, like, you just, you knew everybody. Every single one of the skaters, we were like a tight click back in the day. I mean, you did one of the youngest ones in the group. We got younger kids, uh, you know, 10, 12 years old that are better than some adults that I know. Nowadays, with so many kids, like, it's hard to keep up track what the names are and who's doing what tricks these days. Great. There's some good skaters, lots of talent, a lot of undiscovered people actually do. You live in Thunder Bay or, or a lot of anywhere in Canada, you know, you get, like I said, eight months if you're lucky. I don't know, Thunder Bay, it's pretty much on and off. You got your rain sometimes, and then you got your nice cold winter around here, not like out west. It can snow in the beginning of October, you know, and then the year can be done from there, you know, sometimes it holds off. They close down 414, well not necessarily the town, but no, there's no, you know, nothing like that here. What is it, three, four years now, we have no indoors, so at least if we had indoor skating, we wouldn't have to totally, completely stop, you know. They, as far as winter goes, so minus 30, minus 40 weather. You bundle it up in like six layers and go on the skate park games. It's just a lot of dedication for guys here. So you guys paying off security, you guys to skate inside the malls. It's pretty sick actually. I have to say the spots we most get kicked out of would have to be the government building. The government building. Worst spot, government building. <laughs> if you go to the government building, you better be ready to fight the security guard. We were skating there and freaking guy threw a board with nails at us. Just absolutely nuts. You want a guaranteed confrontation? Walk on that property of the skateboard and just wait. Don't even ride it. Just wait. He'll come. You run into a lot of problems. Security guard. They're a hazard to people and a hazard to themselves by doing it. Our liability becomes uh, uh, foremost when they're stacking picnic tables, when they're stacking chairs, when they're trying to jump off loading docks, you know, trying to do all their tricks. And, uh, and it's a great sport. It's fun to watch and everything else, but under the proper setting. They're not so bad anymore. They're a little bit more lenient on us now. We just go and tell them they're not allowed to skateboard on the property and, and they have to leave. And every so often somebody will you know, say you can't kick them off or you can't do this or you can't do that. But generally they just pick up their boards and, and leave. I've had people yell at me like, to the point where they actually acted like they were going to do something, but if you talk to somebody nicely, asking them kindly, they're going to respond better than if you walk up to them and yell at them. Capping can encompass a lot of things, and it basically just means to shut down a spot. And like, well, no matter how you do it or what it is, if you shut down a spot, in my opinion, it's capped. You put, you can put stoppers on it, like steel stoppers on a ledge or a handrail. You put nubs on it, or you know, or you. What I noticed lately, what they're doing in bigger cities is they're, say, there's a set of stairs that's really nice and smooth. Well, they'll remove a tile space about a, about the width of a sidewalk, and then they'll put something really rough in, and like so you can't ride off of it, you can't pop off it, so it shuts the spot down. They're getting tricky with their capping is. 
creative as we are with skating spots, they're getting just as tricky with capping them. You gotta be more open to a lot of different spots that you never thought about skating before because so many spots are getting shut down these days. It just takes a lot of creativity and just makes you, well, at least I've been told it'll make you a better skater all, overall. I can't really speak on that one then. Yeah. Uh, small town, small town. When you get a good spot going and you love it and you go skate a couple times, the word leaks out in about fucking two days and then everybody's there and then it's capped or whatever and then it's shut down. So uh, that's definitely frustrating when you, get your, when you actually do find a street spot that you like and it's not easy to come by. It just feels like, though I couldn't have picked anything harder to possibly do. <laughs> like just coming from here, it's like the middle of nowhere and it's like how do you go pro? Like, I can't even count the amount of people that told me to my face I'll never go pro, that nobody from Thunder Bay can ever go pro. I've had certain people try to push me to be a vert skater, and I've had certain people try to push me to only skate straight, and I, it, it pisses me off. Like, I get, I get furious about that stuff, because I don't want to be pushed towards one side of skateboarding, because that's not what it's about to me. It's just mm -hmm. being creative and doing what you want to do. And people aren't supposed to be there telling you what kind of tricks are cool and what's not cool. And, how you're supposed to dress, and what music you listen to, because skateboarding is so diverse and there's so much out there as far as that goes and that's just how it is for me. I think it's fine, it's exercise, right? People are doing stuff to keep active. If someone likes to do it, hey, why stop them, right? Like it's not a, a criminal act to be rolling across the cement on four wheels and a piece of wood. 